Hey there, DJ Short from Roto World here, and I'm joined by Matthew Poliat, Drew Silva, and Ryan Boyer, and we're taking an extremely early look ahead to 2020 here uh, with a three-round mock draft uh, that myself and Drew Silva uh, did on the Roto World Baseball podcast uh, in September. So yes, it's a little bit early, but I think it's a, a nice sneak preview for next season. So we're going to go through these first three rounds uh, just for general observations and, and just for an early guide for next year. So let's look at the first round here. And not a surprise to see Mike Trout at the top, but certainly some new blood in this top 10. Um, Cody Bellinger, I think the, the biggest riser, uh, of course, with his huge uh, first half. Uh, but I think the one that stands out to me as the player who could make that leap uh, to number one in the next year or so is Ronald Acuna Jr. Yeah, would, would have been a 40-40 season probably had he, he stayed healthy. Um, he missed, what, the final week mm -hmm. with a groin slash hip issue. Um, looking at that first round, I think, I mean, there were three starting pitchers off the board. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think that'll happen in actual drafts next year? There were four starting pitchers in the top 15 because Verlander went 15th overall. I, I think it could because you're, uh, you know, you're trying to find a 200, 250 inning ace is really difficult these days. Yeah. Uh, so you want to lock in that ace in the early rounds. You know, I think it's going to be interesting to see whether Max Scherzer or Garrett Cole goes mm -hmm. first in drafts. Right. Uh, Scherzer's kind of been the top dog for a, a few years now, but had some injury issues uh, down the stretch, had some, some back problems, didn't have a great September. Strikeouts were there, but the ERA was up a little bit. Cole was just obviously had an insane season. He's also, what, five, six years younger. Right. Could depend largely on where he winds up signing as, a, as a free agent. Uh, I think, you know, coming back to the Astros would be ideal, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Um, you know, if he signs with the Yankees, is that going to hurt his uh, – he has had some home run home issues run in issues, the past. Yeah. Uh, Yankees have been connected to Cole sometimes over the years. So, you know, versus where, if he signed with the Dodgers, that would be a great spot for him. So we just don't know for sure. I'd probably go regard. Cole first if it's sure. with the Astros or back in the NL. If it's another AL team, not quite such a good situation, I'm probably still going Scherzer. So is it, is it more Cole jumping forward and yes. then Scherzer taking a step back or, or concerns about his, his back and the mileage on the some arm? Some physical concerns with Scherzer now. He is getting older. He's, I, he's so probably still top 10, but not top five like he was this year. Mm. Yeah. So Mookie Betts, he was someone who was picked generally second in, in most mixed leagues. I guess it's weird to call it a disappointing year, but I think it probably was, but I think there's enough impact across the board, especially at a big second half, uh, to be confident that it'll be a top five pick. But with him, it's another situation like Cole. Uh, you look at the Red Sox potentially making some changes, you know, he could be playing in a different place next year, and I think that could affect uh, his standing in fantasy drafts. And this situation for him in Boston is great as far as runs and RBI and average. If you go somewhere else, probably looking at worse there, maybe a few more homers, because Fenway's not a great power yeah. park, especially yeah. for him. He could maybe get 35 homers somewhere else, but still not be quite as valuable overall. It just right. seems insane that they would trade Mookie Betts, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it certainly does. Um, so staying with those outfielders, uh, Christian Yelich, uh, we should talk about him. <laughs> he probably would have been the NL MVP if he'd stayed healthy, and maybe he still will be, but if not, it'll be Cody Bellinger. Uh, Bellinger had the ridiculous first half, but kind of dropped off in the second half. I think it's going to be interesting to see where he falls. But I think between Yelich and Acuna, I think there's going to be some some debate about which one will go number two. I mean, I think you could even I think some some people will make the argument that Yelich could be picked over Trout. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been a better fantasy option than Trout the last true. two years. Yeah. Uh, you love Mike Trout for all that he brings. You, you know, Yelich, I think, is probably a better bet in the stolen base department. Plays in a better park, is part of a better offense. Yeah. Obviously, he's shown that the home run to fly ball rate is he pretty much sustained, and he also is hitting more fly balls now. So yeah. 
Is the knee issue gonna mean, mean that he runs less? Right. Uh, it, it, yeah, it was. A, it's yeah. a weird one. It's a fractured <laughs> kneecap, so it's not like a ligament issue. Um, but, but yeah, we don't. Uh, it's a it's a unique injury. To Al, baseball. Altuve they had the had something similar though a couple of years ago, and he's not yeah. running as much. So at this point, though, Yelich is too good to run that much. He shouldn't run that much. <laughs> he doesn't need to. They're kind of right. That's true. Yeah. So I'm taking Acuna over yeah. Yelich because I think he's going to keep stealing more bases. Just and keep him that leadoff spot. I just love that power. Yeah. He's, he's 21 years old. Yeah, room to grow with the, with yeah. the approach and batting average probably too. And uh, we did just kind of cruise right past Trout, but he actually had a career high in home runs this year. He's not <laughs> bad still. He's, he's all right. He's all right. So let's look at the second round now. Um, and there's, of course, some really interesting uh, names in here and some risers in this group. Uh, you know, Cattell Marte was a huge surprise this year. Uh, Raphael Devers was a, a surprise. Uh, Xander Bogarts even to find his way uh, into the second round. Uh, but like Drew said, you know, pitching coming off the board early. Uh, Justin Verlander, uh, of course, had a great year this year. Uh, Walker Bueller even selected late in the second round there. Uh, Ryan, which, which name on this list kind of stands out to you that could be a value, could be a first round type of talent next year? Well, we just got done talking about uh, stolen bases being scarce in the game. It, you could certainly, I think, make an argument that Trey Turner deserves first-round consideration. Mm -hmm. I know Matthew would make that argument. I'd take him over <laughs> Bregman. Ooh. Okay, wow. I mean, the upside's there. He just has he – well, he did play 160-plus games at one point, but – And this game. year's injury was a broken finger yeah, on sure. a bunt. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of fluky true. injuries, he said. Yeah. Net production, he would have been first round. Yeah, value. I don't. He hasn't reached his peak power wise yet either. I he mean, improved his OPS by a hundred points this year, yeah. so there was some progression. Um, there's a lot to love with Trey Turner for fantasy, and I I don't see him. This is really a, him dropping. You know, I mean, no. it's still 14th overall, and it's also two people making the draft picks. Yeah, we went back and forth, myself so and Drew. Yeah, so we so if you, our if teams you, are loaded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel pretty good about it. Let's play it out. Uh, so another free agent, uh, Anthony Rendon. And, you know, he, he's long been considered underrated. I don't think that would, that's going to be the case next year. I think he'll be properly rated, if not maybe overrated, because he doesn't necessarily stand out in, as in the power categories. He doesn't really run. Uh, he's a great hitter, so he's going to hit for average, but some of this is contingent upon where he's going to sign. Yeah, I think the power production could go down some there. He's not, especially if the ball is dejuiced at all, Yeah, he's one who could tumble some. Yeah, certainly. So uh, two veteran outfielders on here uh, who stand out to me, J.D. Martinez and Charlie Blackman, were first-round picks maybe in the previous mm -hmm. two years, certainly J.D. Martinez this year. So it's a little weird to see them fall. Uh, Blackman actually had a higher OPS this year than he did last year. And J.D. Martinez, you know, maybe his peak was the past two years, but assuming he stays with the Red Sox, I know the Red Sox are maybe hoping he ups out, yeah. but assuming he stays with the Red Sox, I think he can be a second-round talent too. When we broke down this draft for the, the Roto World Baseball podcast, which everyone should subscribe to. Nice, um, <laughs> nice plug. There is, you know, and it, I think a strategy to picking some veteran players when everyone else is reaching for young upside. Yeah. Um, Blackman is going to get 600 plate appearances. 300 of them will be at Coors Field. Um, People will be scared off that he doesn't run anymore, yeah. but he's so good in the other he's, four he's the, it's the two The last two years, he's been the guy power-wise. And, you know, they dropped him from leadoff, but uh, Trevor Story, who was on the board there, he's been batting leadoff for the Rockies, which is really intriguing for his value. Right. Um, if, if you're the guy getting the most at bats at Coors Field, That's there's pretty a lot good. of value. <laughs> Speaking of a strategy of taking veterans, so let's go back a little bit, a few picks to Justin Verlander. Kind of struggle to, I feel like you kind of have to hedge your bets a little bit with him because, I mean, if he's as good as he was this year, he's going to be a first round talent. But yeah. he's going to be 37 right. next year. He obviously hasn't shown any signs of slowing down, but he's going to hit a wall at some point, uh, you know. Five years ago. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, that's what we thought anyway. anyway. So. No, that was like 2010. It was like <laughs> nine years ago. <laughs> yeah, he's, it's tough to know what to do with him because obviously the production is going to be there if he, you know, stays healthy. And is, but I don't know. It's 37-year-old pitchers with that kind of mileage on his arm. Yeah. 
He gives up a bunch of homers yeah. to this year, no hits. But the whip, yeah, was still like 0.80. It was yeah. a, uh, in the sevens, like going into the last week of September. So Aaron Judge, twenty first. That stands out to me. I think that could be it's a value, a great value, good pick, Drew. Uh, <laughs> so we're moving on to the third round here. Uh, more pitchers in here. Uh, young pitchers making the jump. Uh, we talked about Bieber. Uh, Jack Flaherty stands out to, to close out the third round. I could think he could potentially go higher. Uh, but then some players who maybe you're more accustomed to seeing earlier. Uh, Jose Altuve, Jose Ramirez, Bryce Harper, Javier Baez off his big season. Uh, you know, I think there's some room for some great value here. Uh, I think Jose Altuve is interesting to me in that he's been a you know, year in, year out, first round type of pick. But at this point, do you think we have to lower expectations and that he's not going to run as much? Yeah, this is an interesting round. Uh, I think you. Uh, this probably makes sense about where Altuve should go at this I point. Agree. I think it's uh, the right spot for him. Yeah, I mean, he's if he's not going to be stealing bases, uh, it, obviously it significantly lowers his value a lot. And he could be a guy who's affected by the if the ball is quote unquote dejuiced. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, if he goes down to twenty home runs and he's not running anymore and he doesn't have a huge BABIP season that props up his batting average. Yep. Uh, he's probably not even a third round type guy. Right. But. How about Jordan Alvarez going, what, 26th overall? Yeah, two rookies in here, Alvarez and Alonzo. Not even, and and yeah, Tatis. Yeah, Tatis. Not even on the radar last spring, uh, but yeah, 27 home runs, 78 RBIs over his first. Does the DH only worry you at all? No, I think it's great. I think it's going to stay healthy. I think he's locked in as the DH already as a 22 yeah. year old and a loaded team. I think it's awesome. And you never know. I mean, the Astros could mix them in at first base and, you know, interleague play. Especially so, if you're in a league with, like, two utility spots, too. Mm-hmm. You, know, yeah. you don't care about what, what position he plays. And Tatis getting a full season out of him, hopefully healthy. Uh, I think it could be a value in that third round. Uh, and going to Alonzo, I think at least the batted ball metrics sort of back up the power that he had this year as far as barrel percentage, hard hit percentage. So... Even if the ball becomes, you know, slightly less yeah. juiced, I don't think it'll really bother. And if you've much. watched how far some of his home runs travel, yeah. I think he's going to retain a lot of that. And I think the other thing about Alonso is that he's not your typical slugger, and that he's striking out 35 percent of the time. He does have a nice approach at the plate, uh, can take his walks. I think his strikeout rate was 25 percent. So he's got that dad bod strength. <laughs> he does, <laughs> Jack, as we've seen. Yeah. Jack Flaherty at 36th overall. I, if he leads the Cardinals, you know through to the NLCS even, and it's, it's on his back, which it probably will have to be, I think he, he's going to go a lot higher than that. I think he could be – he could top Walker Buehler maybe. Yeah, top 25. Yeah, I mean, a 0.93 year ERA over his last 106 and a third regular season innings, like it's a historic second half that he had. And I feel like I've disrespected George Springer for a couple of years now, yeah, but he had the best year of his career this year. I think I was waiting always for him to be that 40-40 type of guy. He's not going to be that, um, but hitting for power, hitting for average, getting on base, and you were saying, you know, having the most at-bats in the Rockies lineup is huge, but also for for the Astros, so I think he deserves a bit more respect going into 2020. It's a theme with these Astros players. A lot of them are not running as much these days. Yeah. They also didn't issue in a, a single intentional walk all this season. <laughs> don't so. give away right. outs. Don't best give away base runners. What do you know? <laughs> Fun facts. <laughs> you only get 27 outs. Don't give them away and don't put people on base if they don't exactly. earn it. Exactly. You know, it's, it makes a lot of sense. So something to think about for 2020. For additional fantasy news, rumors, injury reports, analysis, and more, go to rotorworld.com slash MLB.